Welcome back to Upfront. Wisconsin's first congressional district is the state's highest profile race for Congress this year. As you know, the seat in southeastern Wisconsin is open with the retirement of House Speaker Paul Ryan. The race features Republican Brian Stile, a UW regent and corporate attorney, and our next guest, union iron worker Randy Bryce of Racine. And it's good to have you back on the program. Great to be here, Mike. Thank you for inviting me. So this past week, you were endorsed by former President Obama. Yes. Um, I'm wondering if you think that's a good thing. I mean, after all, your district did go for Donald Trump by about 11 points back in 2016. Right, it did. Um, people are souring on Donald Trump, and I know Donald Trump has endorsed Brian Stile. Um, president Obama is a reminder of the last president that we had that did, you know, was able to get a lot of good things done, um, even though he had the House and the Senate were stopping everything he did. It was a president that I have a lot of respect for as far as knowing that he's going to make the best decision on behalf of our country and, and put people ahead of party. I'm wondering at this point in the campaign whether you think it, in some respects it might have been easier to run against Speaker Ryan than against Brian Stile. One is a political veteran, one is sort of a political newcomer, I guess you could call him. Would it have been easier to run against Speaker Ryan? Well, I think it's different, but what we have to keep in mind is that although Paul Ryan isn't going to, his name's not going to be on the ballot in November, his ideas will be. And this is somebody that he personally handpicked to take his spot to continue his policies. And I think part of the reason him stepping down had to do with the fact that he finally admitted that we're going to have to make cuts to Social Security. And, and that's something that helps seniors um, stay out of poverty. And, and in the district, that's something that I'm hearing about. You know, next, next thing underneath health care is Social Security. And, and people don't want somebody that's going to cut it. Um, I've promised not just to, to refuse to make cuts to it, but also to expand it to make sure that more people get help. Because with, with what's going on today, more people do need that help to get back on their feet, not less of it. And it's, it's something we've been paying into our entire lives, and people deserve to receive it. Are those, uh, clearly, you and Brian Stile have profound differences on the issues. Your approach to programs like Social Security or Medicare, are, are those the biggest differences, or would you cite others? Oh, I'd say there's just about every issue I've I've Give seen me an example this. of what you think is most important, not just to you, but to voters in your district. Well, I, I would say health care right healthcare now. Is. Um, and that's, that's personally one of the reasons why I got in, being a cancer survivor and been, having been diagnosed at a time when I didn't have insurance. A lot of people don't, you know, are, don't have the ability to go see a doctor now. Um, and I've been in favor of a Medicare for All program. Um, Brian Stile has said that I'm in favor of, you know, boosting up our taxes incredible amounts. Um, but it's not true. There was a Koch Brothers study that showed that um, we're actually going to save $2 trillion per year with a Medicare for All system. You think it can be paid for without significant tax increases? Absolutely. I absolutely do. You talked about a year ago about the impeachment of Donald Trump. I'm wondering if more than a year later you still hold that view? You think he should be impeached? And if so, why? Well, first of all, I, I don't think it would be an issue if we had a Congress you know, that's led by Paul Ryan that would stand up to him and use part of the checks and balances that have been put in place in our Constitution. Um, secondly, moving forward, I mean, definitely he's, he's had some issues. He's done some, some things that I find to be very impeachable. Um, but we also have to be very careful about if is it going to be successful or not. Because it would, if it would pass in the House and not be successful in the Senate, that would give Donald Trump the opportunity to go before a camera and see, I told you, there was, there was nothing to be impeached over. It would be a fresh voice, different perspective in Congress. How would you feel about House Speaker Nancy Pelosi? Would you support her as Speaker? Well, um, if Democrats gain control, one thing I know for sure is that Paul Ryan's not going to be the next speaker. Um, but when it comes to Nancy Pelosi, I, to be honest, I don't know. I don't know who would be running against her. Um, I don't think that there's any need to slam her. But I see us having a lot of fresh new faces being elected, first-time candidates running for Congress, um, and I definitely would support whoever I feel is going to represent workers' voices um, and also can get the job done. Uh, final question, and, and political campaigns are tough, and, and you've seen some of the ads that have been run against you. They talk about nine arrests, that, that Randy Bryce is not, uh, not really someone we can trust. Um, your brother did an ad uh, saying he was going to support your opponent. Mm -hmm. Your brother is a, a cop, we should say. How did, they, how did you react to that? What do you make of that? Well, I've, I've known for many years that he's a Republican. 
Um, we've had, there were times in, in Milwaukee where, you know, something was going on, a Scott Walker protest or something. I was there as part of the protesters. He was there as part of the police. We've always gotten along. We just haven't talked politics. Um, personally, it doesn't affect me. It doesn't bother me that he's expressing his views just the way I'm able to express mine. But my mom, it took my mom by complete surprise, and it, it really was crushing to her. She called for the ad to be, you know, re, re, to take the, the ad off um, and called on Brian Style to ask Paul Ryan's Super PAC to remove the ad just because of, it, it's a low blow. It's, it's a, a direction I never would have decided to go to. I never tried to, you know, go after Brian Style's family. Um, it's a sad state when people need to stoop that low to try to pit brother against brother to score political points. Final question, do you think those ads have dinged your character? Have they hurt you in this campaign and make people question whether or not you should be elected to Congress? No, I don't think for the most part it hasn't because, um, especially on the ads that's running, it's footage of me being arrested standing up for dreamers for peaceful protests. Um, the, the arrest before that was having a sit-in in Ron Johnson's office, downtown Milwaukee. People know that I stand up for them. The OUI, that was a mistake I made over 20 years ago. Um, it was a stupid thing to do. I fully accept responsibility for it. It's not something that's happened since, um, and it's, it's not something that's going to happen again. I've learned from it. I'm moving on. If you do something wrong, that's what I teach my son. If you do something wrong, stand up, own up to it. I'm going, to be, I'm going to have your back no matter what you did, and we're going to get through it because that's the right thing to do. And nobody is perfect. Randy Bryce is the Democratic candidate in the 1st Congressional District. We appreciate your time. Thanks very much for being with us today. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure. Next, it's that time of the year again. The parade of debates begins.